but the tremendous beginning was coming to a quick ending. They needed something to stop the trendy path that they were following and put them back on the road to immortal success. First, they began to tag on new sit-in members like Wild Bill Knoll. The most successful talent that Sissy Bomb ever discovered was a virtuoso percussionist by the name of Flippy McFibbins, who performed for the first time at a Sissy Bomb show in Oklahoma City. He's going to be guest starring with the Bomb tonight. How you doing? Man? How do you feel about that? Hey, it's great, man. Hey, you know. Speak up. Hey, it's great, you know, like, it's, it's, it's no problem, you know, I, I was, you know, I was up in this area anyway, so I figured, you know, what the hell, I might as well do a gig or two, get a couple beers, why not? Flippy will be doing some big books in you, too. Hey. Why don't you give us a little sample of what you did? All right, here's some off my first album, uh, Lick It or Suck It. <laughs> That was very good. <laughs> Alright, how did you get hooked up with Sissy Bomb? Well, I knew the drummer, he, was, uh, you know, he, he filled me in on this whole gig and he's like, you know, I got something going down. So I was like, Speak up, you fucking quiet bastard. <laughs> well, you know, he's a dickhead. He's the, the guy holding the camera. Fuck you. <laughs> this interview's over, prick. <laughs> Today, Flippy is holding his own, touring with his own band, Flippy and the Flip Tones. Are y'all ready for this? Bye, bye! Put the needle on the record. Now this cured the symptoms, but not the disease. So they hired Rody Extraordinaire, Rod. Uh, they called me up and uh, asked me to you know, do a few shows with them, so I said, hell yeah. With Rod, the Sissy Bomb show improved tenfold, but still nobody was coming to the show. They finally realized that it was their manager at the time, Flaky Butter, who was spending all their money on women, fast cars, Gold Bond medicated powder. This here, this here snap. She made the best stuff on the face of the earth, goddammit. Their gigs were suffering, so they fired Flaky Butter and hired Mr. Mick Swankle, who also sits in with the band from time to time. Mick Swankle. <laughs> well, you know, he's here. <laughs> Now they had everything organized. They needed to reintroduce themselves to the world and draw in the big crowds. But how? What happened was, Sissy Bomb started off with this gigantic boom. Really? Like a bomb. Like a bomb, An exactly. explosion. Sissy Bomb. The boom. explosion. Boom. boom. So, what happened was, all of a sudden, people were the shows were getting smaller and smaller, you know, from palladiums to, you know, record shops. <laughs> right, they were on top. And then they sort of mm -hmm. fell down to the middle. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be on top. And so, Gabe, of course, remembered, you know, the guy I played with in, in Jasselb. He was a fucking madman. He could play any instrument, and he fucking wailed on all of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, we could get him in to dazzle the crowd. And so... They invited me back there to audition with them. You know, I played one song with them. No, it was like one and a half verses into the song. They were like, we don't need to hear anymore. You're in. 
So went from there, we were back on top within two weeks. Uh, you know, we called up from Chicago again. Spent all his fucking money that he won on the five-figure lotto thing. He just needed a break. We gave him one. He sounds like a fucking wank, but people like it. I don't know. After tagging on Slim, they began to practice seriously. Once per week if they were lucky. Twice per week if they were unlucky. Watch for the tonic. Uh -huh. <laughs> We'll have band practices in another two hours, okay? Sissy Bomb was quickly back on top with the new look and a few new members. After they sold out Vegas, they were asked to be a part of the first annual Rock and Jocks soccer game on MTV. This captured the young hip audience that they wanted. Now they were so big, they had to disguise themselves so people would not recognize them on the streets. They played for the ambassador and they played for numerous talk shows and are still awaiting for a slot on the Conan O'Brien show. The sissy bomb has never been on our show. They never will be on our show if I have anything to do with it. Um, that's all I have to say about Sissy Bomb. Sissy Bomb, although today are recognized as official musical diplomats, they met with great political controversy when they headlined the tour in 82 with CB4, the most controversial rap band of all time. When CB4 opened up for Sissy Bomb, I was a little, you know, a little shaky about it at first. You know, I'd, I'd heard horror stories about how they gave all their opening acts the shitty sound systems, and you know, but the guys turned out to be okay. They turned to be okay. I mean, a little more homosexual than I would have thought, but okay. Uh, are they still around? 